for the true Dyna bro out there, there has always been one and only one weapon of choice. Simpson Motorcycle Helmets. If you could make out those T-bars and that fairing in the distance, more often or not, a ghost bandit or an outlaw bandit would not be far behind. For those of us who mod out these bikes to meet true performance, wind deflection has always been one of the largest obstacles. So when my people found a solution that could allow you to attain those fast speeds while also looking cool, well, you know the rest, because this is the way, right? Many of us would then go on over the years to push these helmets to the absolute max, which is the heavy distance bike trips of course. Simpson took note of this and decided it was time to put some resources into a helmet that could handle the most extreme riding style while still maintaining that true sinister aesthetic that comes with every Simpson helmet. So without further ado, this is my long overdue video on the Simpson Mod Bandit before you buy. What's going on YouTube? FXDLS Brooklyn is back in the building. So many of you at this point have been following me from the early days and that means you've seen me ride cross country and back multiple times with a Simpson Ghost Bandit. Whether I like it or not, my identity as a rider and a content creator has been heavily infused with these helmets and for good reason. At the end of the day, I'm a mile crushing heavy distance rider if nothing else. I've never and still am not about the bagger life, so a full face helmet for the type of riding that I do has always been a must. When I heard that Simpson was putting out a helmet specifically designed for my riding style, you know your favorite Dynabro on YouTube had to see what was up. Just because these helmets have been my prime weapon of choice over the years does not mean that I think that there are some shortcomings and areas for improvement. So I hope this video can help you make an informed decision if you're someone that is finding themselves in the market for a new helmet. So let's take a second and do an unboxing here just so you can see exactly what you're getting straight out the box. As we unbox my new limited edition Hellfire Mod Bandit, we're also going to read off the description that Simpson wrote themselves. Modular function and convenience meets Simpson style and attitude. One hand modular function, communication system ready, pin lock system compatible, and internal sunshield are some of the highlights of the Mod Bandit. Ready to ride across town or around the world, the Mod Bandit offers the function and style that you're looking for. Your helmet ships with one clear shield installed, additional colors available separately. The available sizes go from an extra small to a 2XL. This is both DOT as well as ECE certified. Of course, it has the one hand shin bar opening and the ability to also lock the shin bar in the open position. There's metal shin bar locking components for strength and durability. And of course, it's ready for the best comm unit out there, which is none other than the Lexan Novus. Go ahead and use my discount code in the description and save some money when you pick that up. We have a shield quick release. It includes an internal drop down visor, multiple adjustable intake vents. So now that we got that out of the way, from someone who has ran this helmet pretty hard over the last year, including multiple bike trips, here's the things I think you should know before buying this helmet. So as someone whose riding style is defined by laying down the real miles, first and foremost, I can hands down tell you that this helmet achieves its true purpose. The many adjustable air vents, wide field of vision, the drop down visor, the pin lock ready shield, the comm system compatibility, the chin curtain, and the easily removable face shield are all things that I welcome for those heavy mile days. Probably the biggest functional upgrade is this helmet's modular capability. Especially if you're someone like us that puts in the thousand mile days on the long road, there are so many times where you literally do not have time to take off your helmet when you stop for gas. Being able to easily flip this helmet open has allowed me to eat and drink while on the move without ever having to strip my helmet, my riding glasses, and my earplugs. This seems like a small thing, but really does add up if you're trying to make time and laying down the heavy mile days. If you are doing something like riding cross country, you truly need a versatile helmet that could handle any situation that the road throws your way. 
This helmet, if nothing else, does that well. So let's be real. A lot of modular offerings out there just look really, really lame. And obviously, while aesthetics should never be the main reason why you purchase a helmet, you're lying to me if you tell me it's at least not somewhat of a factor. This helmet offers all of the welcome luxuries designed for the long road without sacrificing that aggressive styling we've all come to know and love with Simpson helmets. I actually like the way this helmet looks over the Ghost Bandit with the aggressive vertical front vents. The really nice thing about this helmet is when you typically ride far from home with a helmet that screams up to no good, it can actually lead to some unnecessary nonsense on the road. Like if you walk into a gas station looking like this, they might think you're there trying to rob the place rather than just buying a Cliff Bar and a Gatorade. Whether you're dealing with law enforcement or anyone, being able to see your face, especially if you're smiling of course, actually makes a huge difference in how you're perceived on the road. Having this ability to go from no face, no case, to happy-go-lucky, law-abiding citizen with the flip of a latch can be a huge game changer when interacting with other people on the road. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie to you here. The helmet is loud, especially at highway speeds. This is generally not a factor for me due to the fact that I always ride with earplugs, but in comparison to my RF1400, it's definitely a really loud helmet. I think a lot of this may come from the amount of generous venting we see with this helmet. So yeah, if the main thing you're looking for is a quiet helmet, you should probably keep walking. I told you I was going to be honest, and fitment remains, as with most Simpson helmets, my biggest issue. Now I say this with the situation being that this helmet actually fits me really great, but this is because I got lucky in terms of the shell size situation. The biggest flaw of this helmet is that there are only two shell sizes. I'm actually lucky to be on the upper bound of the first range of shell sizes, so the helmet actually fits me great. However, if you're someone that's wearing an extra small, it means your helmet is going to be the same size as my medium with extra padding added to make it work for you. This is why a lot of people purchase these helmets and complain that it gives them the bobblehead aesthetic. It's kind of like buying an article of clothing that's two sizes too big for you and then stuffing it with something to make it fit. It's just not a great solution. This particular reason is why I eventually gave up on the Ghost Bandit altogether years ago after they had changed the original 2016 formula on that helmet. The best advice I could give you is try it on, wear it around the house for at least 30 minutes, and if it feels right, ride off into the sunset. If you're getting hot spots, pressure points, or you feel like it's that bobblehead situation, just return it and keep moving and try something different like maybe an outlaw bandit or a speed bandit. Remember when I said how cool you're going to look with this helmet? Well my friends, there's a trade off and that trade off is safety. The distinct angular chin that is the Simpson trademark and contributes to its aggressive looking aesthetics actually could wind up causing you more damage in a wreck. Picture a smooth spherical object versus something angular. The smooth object will create less resistance upon impact, creating less shock that is going to be sent into the rider's head or neck. This is why although they look way less cooler, a showy RF 1400 as well as something like a Biltwell Gringo is probably a way safer helmet. I think we all know at this point that the DOT label is kind of whatever in terms of a safety rating, but passing an ECE actually does mean something in terms of safety, so don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that this is not a safe helmet, I'm just saying that it's probably not the safest helmet. This my friends is part of choosing motorcycle gear, which is what level of safety are you comfortable with and is it right for you? Because if maximum safety is your priority, this probably means you're also wearing inflatable airbags in your pants and jacket and have most likely X'd out of this video probably three minutes ago. What I can say is without a doubt that this helmet is worlds better in terms of safety if you compare it to something like a half helmet or a three quarter or obviously no helmet at all. This helmet is actually really special for me because it's the only helmet I've ever been able to offer my dad to get him to finally stop wearing half helmets as his primary helmet. Which again, lets me ride a little bit easier knowing that someone I love has exponentially more protection in the event of a wreck. The only thing I have wondered about is how would the movable chin mechanism of this helmet fare upon serious impact? 
I can't tell you from first-hand experience, but I have had people write in to tell me that their modular helmets have actually fared pretty well when put to the unfortunate test. So there you have it. As someone who has been running these helmets for the better part of a decade, I've given you both the glows and grows for this helmet. There are clearly improvements that can be made with this helmet, however, I still really love this helmet and have been using it as both a daily commuter as well as for the bike trips for over a year now with little to no complaints. For those who want to crush miles and look damn good while doing it, Simpson takes it to yet another level by offering us true versatility without sacrificing aesthetics. If you enjoyed this one, take a moment to like the video and subscribe to the channel. We do have a Patreon for some deeper cuts and deeper miles and would love to have you on the team. Whether you're a Dyna bro crushing miles or a performance bagger bro doing your thing, stay safe and stay low. Practice a positive mental attitude. Get your gear dialed in. And on that, FX Los Brooklyn is out. <laughs>